forecast first, sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Well, some of you picked up on a little bit of rain tonight, but there's a lot of you didn't see hardly anything at all. A couple of showers still showing up into portions of Coles County into Edgar County from uh, near Paris and then stretching back down towards the Charleston Mattoon area, getting close to Casey and then maybe down towards the Toledo area. Temperatures tonight falling back down as a cold front moves through. It's 56 in Danville, now down to 52 in Jacksonville. You can see the numbers updating 55 Decatur in Taylorville. It's got to be a cool start to the morning. I bundle up. Uh, kids at the bus stop are talking low 40s. The rain will be gone, and actually the sunshine comes back for us. But on the way home, we're only talking the lower 50s for highs. It's going to be a cool one for sure and really windy. We'll talk more about those winds when we come back. WCI3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA3 News. It's crazy. I can't believe it happened. It's the shock of a lifetime for one group of students. How a YouTube star surprised them in a way they'll never forget. Plus, one city cut its police force in half and has a skeleton crew for everything else. How much tighter it may have to pull the belt. Crowded doesn't even cover it for this basketball game, but it wasn't just the players who people came out for. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. A social media star paid a visit to the U of I, but only after he paid a small group of students a check they'll never forget. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. And I'm Jessica Coons. Hundreds of students planned to watch as YouTube personality David Dobrook took the stage at the Illini Union tonight. But this story is about an unplanned appearance in front of just 15 students. WCI3's Emily Braun is live on U of I's campus tonight. So Emily, first of all, I'm sure some people at home wondering who this guy is and what he does. Jessica, he is a social media star with quite the following. I mean, take a look at this crowd of students gathered around the Illini Union right now. He just finished up his talk, and these students have been out here for at least 20 minutes waiting in the cold just for a chance to see the man himself. He posts videos of him and his vlog squad with funny antics. These videos get millions of hits. And even though he's known for being funny after tonight, 15 students will also know this guy for his generosity. This is my first vlog. I don't know how long this is going to last, but I'm going I'm to give it a shot. I'm going to try vlogging. This was the vlog that started it all for David Dobrik. Several years later, he has quite the following for his antics. It's safe to assume by now he's used to hearing that everywhere he goes. Same deal for Sophia Berensmeyer and her friends when Dobrik stormed in their dorm and surprised them. And we were all just sitting there and we were like, oh, oh my God. I spent like four hours of my day like trying to find a place where he might come. And so for it to pay off that we actually met him was really cool. Dobrik challenged her to a game of rock, paper, scissors. He's like, if. I win, you all have to pay me $20, but if she wins, then you each get 1000 Paper covered rock. And the second she won, we just erupted. <laughs> like, we had, there's no words, we just started cheering. So as promised, he covered them all with a $1,000 check. He kind of pointed out that college is expensive and that there's a lot of things to pay for. Um, and he obviously was a college student a little bit ago. While hundreds of students packed the union for a chance to see Dobrik's humor on this screen, this group of friends will be forever grateful they experienced his kindness in person. Just crazy. I can't believe it happened. Several students in that group told me that this is going to help put a dent in their college tuition. He put these checks forward in partnership with the dating app Bumble. And as for what just happened here, this was all for just a chance to see him come out of the Illini Union and get in his car to leave. Crazy. Live in, Cha in Champaign, Emily Braun, WCI3, your local news leader. Certainly cleared out pretty quickly. All right, Emily, thank you. In other news, two teenagers were arrested today after police say they robbed a bank. It happened at Regions Bank near West Clark and South State Street in Champaign. And a 16-year-old and 18-year-old, Dakir Pickens, were arrested. A gun was fired inside the bank. No one was hit. An employee was hurt after police say one of the suspects assaulted them. Both teenagers 
were caught after they led police on a half-mile foot chase. Police are still investigating. We have an update from 5 o'clock. The Champaign School District unanimously voted to remove its chief financial officer. The school board agreed on a separation and release agreement. It cuts Tom Lockman's ties to the district. Lockman's been on paid administrative or paid leave rather since mid-June. He will be paid a severance of one year's salary. That's $150,000. He agrees not to sue the district or try to work for the district again. Officials didn't say why they made the move. Lockman's previously said he believes it was retaliatory. He went public with the district financial concerns earlier this year. We have more on the story on our website, WCIA.com. Danville City Council members made some big decisions tonight. They signed off on a proposal from their casino developer. They also voted to approve the site plan and zoning ordinances needed for Haven Game Gaming to start development. The company now has to wait for a license from the Illinois Gaming Board. They will have one year from the day the license is issued to open up shop or face a $20,000 fine for each day they're late. City Council also approved the decision to use eminent domain for the development of Carl's new health care facility. That means they can condemn properties in order to take control of them. There were several properties this applied to because the owners haven't reached a deal with Carl yet. The mayor says they could do this because it was found to be in the best interest of both the city and the people who live there and will remove blight. If eminent domain is used, the city will take control and pay the owners what the property is appraised for. And new tonight, one woman in Champaign County says she she got an unwelcome surprise with her property taxes and says she's not alone. She says she got a late property tax notice in the mail but already paid her bill. When she called the county treasurer's office and asked about it, they told her their phones had been ringing off the hook from people calling about the same issue. We reached out to the county treasurer tonight but have not heard back. Sticking with property taxes, property owners and renters in one city say theirs are unfair and they're telling state representatives about it. Governor Pritzker formed a legislative committee to tackle the issue. They're making their way around the state and tonight they made a stop in Mattoon. WCI3's Jennifer Jensen is with us. So Jennifer, they have a very specific goal. They do, Jessica. The Property Tax Task Force Committee was formed to draft legislation to help people get relief from high property taxes. They're trying to figure out what's causing the unfairly high taxes and how to fix it. That starts with hearing people's testimonies and how they're affected by this. A few state representatives were there to answer people's questions tonight, and people took the opportunity to share their complaints. It's not all about getting revenue, too. How about cutting the cost? of living in this state. We need some of that too. We need some balance here. People are losing their property. People are lacking the wealth to pass on to the next generation in their family. They're becoming homeless because of no other reason but the taxes are so high. No definitive solutions were concluded tonight. The subcommittees will go back to Springfield for a veto session at the end of the month and they'll talk about what was discovered during the public hearings and begin drafting legislation to be presented at the next session. Back to you. All right, Jennifer, thank you. The concerned taxpayers of Coles County helped host this public hearing. We reported earlier this year the group filed lawsuits against the county concerning the commercial and industrial property tax reassessments that affected residential property taxes as well. One city is limping along with the shoestring budget. What steps the mayor is considering to pay rising pension costs? Plus, it was an event so big they had to move to a larger space. Why so many came out to this basketball game. And most high school athletes have off-season workouts, but not this time, where one teenager was getting a different type of training.